Yeah, that was the Hot House Flowers. Don't go, is what they want to say to you. It's almost time for me to go, I'm afraid. Uh, my thanks to Sean Colvin and my thanks to George Milley. He dropped in for a bit of a chat and brightened up our morning considerably with his apparel and his banter. Uh, tomorrow we have music from the Red Hot Roosters and we've got Red Hot Gossip from Donna Legg, so I hope you can join me then. If you can't wait until then, you can contact us by leaving a message on the answer phone and it's double three eight two eight one, prefixed by the Belfast code, of course, 02890. You can email me, jb at bbc.co.uk or if you really want to exert yourself, why not uh, send me a fax, double three eight zero four eight. I don't know what I'm going to do for the rest of the day, but I know what Jerry Anderson's going to do for the next hour and a half and he's going to start right now. Right, here he is. Mr. Anderson oh, is... is yes, come on. <laughs> Please, I, I want to put you on there here. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Oh, good morning. Sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, well, did you not start the plant yet? Look at that. Look at me. I have to start. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. What is this? What is this? told me it was half ten. enough of that. That's Chris Ray, I do believe. I'm sorry I'm late this morning. I was up circling the relics. No, somebody, I can't find, so what, what, okay. somebody hid my box. I can't, I can't go down here with your record box. That's what kept me. I'm terribly sorry about that. Good morning. This is Jerry Anderson here, a little later than usual. I'm sorry. It's 27 minutes to 11 o'clock. We'll be here until 12 o'clock. The number to ring if you want to contact this program is 08459 Listen to me panting like a dog. And if you want to send me an email, it's jerry.anderson at the bbc.co.uk. I've got a lot of poems today. I've got one about a dog, actually, but I'll keep that for later. I know you're waiting with bated breath, as indeed many dogs have. Oh, it's Davey Manderson who writes to me, and he said, Regarding your fondness for dogs, I enclose this short poem, which was given to me. Unfortunately, the author is unknown. Sometimes that's a good thing. I also enclose my new... Ad- oh, thank you very much. I stopped into a sound envelope for a copy of Tuesday morning's poem. Tuesday morning's poem actually was written not by me, but I think it was written by a lady called Anne-Marie Campbell, if I'm not... Uh, uh, I can't remember which one I read. I- I'll go into that later. Anyway, this is a poem... poem about- no, I won't read the poem about the dog. It's too mundane and a little too... Well, well, I'll read it later. Here's a card from uh, a gentleman called... Uh, what is it called? No, oh, he just called himself this... Fred's Beds. 
<clears throat> right, really enjoy the program each day. Keep it going, he says. I intend to until I'm stopped. Please wish happy birthday to Mr. Clive Taylor, who's known as Skippy. In Bally Black, in Newton Arts, who'll be the big 5-0 oh, on Saturday the 2nd of June. He's such a hard worker, he never takes a break. Well, that's a mistake. That's a mistake. You may be 50 on Saturday, but you better learn to take a break. You won't be 60 in 10 years' time. You'll fall down in the garden like everybody else who doesn't take a break. He's a real Joe Dolan fan. Oh, that, that explains it. Please give his long-suffering wife, Mary, a mention too. Well, hello, Mary Taylor and Clive. Uh, happy birthday on Saturday. I have to tell you, it's all downhill from now. Right, uh, a lot of stuff about dogs today. Pardon? Would we call for you, please? Somebody hid my box yesterday. I wish people would leave my record box alone. I, I leave it out because mm. I know that people want some of the stuff that's in it, but yeah. seeing people abuse the privilege, I think it's really disgraceful. Mm. Somebody hid that. I ran around upstairs. You'd, I bet you wondered where I was. What happened to you this morning? I couldn't find me box. Oh, right. My record box. I wasn't where I left it. I right? thank you for starting the program, by the yeah. way, I Sean. I didn't. <laughs> oh, Dave, well, who did? You did. We were late, yeah. though. But didn't you, you put on something? Uh, I could you talk to dog. Carol, who's in a bit of a hurry, and uh, she's a midwife. But my she needs, dog. She needs your help. My dog. So you're one in a million. You're special to me. Affectionate, loyal, and good company. You're there when I'm lonely and life seems a bore. You cheer me and offer a comforting paw. The look in your eyes says you quite understand as you thrust a bewhiskered, wet nose in my hand. You never desert me wherever I go. You're a far better friend than some people I know. I thank you for writing this short monologue to my faithful, devoted companion, my dog. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Jay. How I are just, you? I'm fine. I just felt I had to read that ode to a dog. That was very nice. Yes, uh, or uh, as it's known as... No, I was going to say something else, but I, I better not. <laughs> uh, yes, I believe you're a midwife. That's right. Oh, yeah. I work in East Belfast with a, a good crowd of girls. Good. Well, I'll tell you what I'm looking for. I'm trying to arrange a barn dance in Cumber. Is that wise, do you think? Well. Is it? it it's fundraising and sort of we're, we're doing our best. It's for a good cause, yeah. You don't it expect is. to enjoy yourself now. Oh, well, now that would be nice as well. I've been, in, I've been at barn dances. Oh, right. You tend to get out of control. I hope you understand that. Well, that would be nice too. Not too much, mind you. You sound like my kind of woman. Oh, thank you. Have you ever run a barn dance before? No. Oh, no. Well, you see, it's not easy. Uh, it's all new to me. You see, the point is about think about barn dances, and I, I don't want to discourage you in any way, but I think it's, I think you should be told the truth. Okay. See, the, orig the origin of barn, barn dances. People had barn dances in well, in the southern states of America, where, where the nights were warm. Uh huh. You see, now people cottoned on to the idea, and they decided to have them here, but they don't realise that nights are freezing here. <laughs> and uh, any barn dances that I've ever been at, uh, I've always foundered. And sometimes they get the big jet heater. You know uh -huh. the one that goes whoosh? Yeah. Don't get one of those. Right. Don't get one of those. And you can't light fires because, you know, things go on fire. Mm -hmm. uh, I just suggest that you tell everyone to double up in their clothing. Right. And Let serve me. hot whiskies. Right. Okay. Okay, that would be great. All right, then. Well, uh, what I'm looking for is somebody. I can't find a caller for a barn dance. I've tried various things on the Internet, and I'm having no luck at all finding a caller for a barn dance. Really? Yeah. Oh, this is good. We've never advertised one of these before. Uh, well, they're like gold dust, tell them. They are like hen's teeth. Yep. As a matter of fact, uh, swing your partners round and round. The, 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 the do -si do That's the one. This is what you want. Yes, I, I could nearly do it, but I'm, when is it? Well, we'll have to get the caller first, and then we'll arrange a date. What kind of money is in it? Is it big money? Well, I don't know. Because it was a charity event and it was fundraising, right. we were okay, hoping well, they would maybe reduce their rates a bit. Oh, well, in that case, I'm not available. All right. Okay, well, let's try and get you a, a call. What's the word for that? I think I think the proper name is caller. I think it is, you know. It's almost kind of like being an auctioneer, but it's different. Yeah. And uh, But the only thing about that, any fool can do that at all, because mm -hmm. the people who are dancing don't know what the man's going to call anyway. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to do what he tells them, because they don't know what to do anyway. They just people have two left feet, so that's they, great. They, they just roll up their sleeves and arse about. I have a and bit of the, fun. The boy shout, Hey, guys, don't see no. That's the one. Okay. All right, then. Maybe, well, wh where are you going to have this? Um, that we have a, a couple of locations. Um, people have offered us barns in Cumber. Oh no, just roughly, and round about the Cumber area. Yeah. Well, that's all I need to know, just in case you know anyone's listening mm -hmm. who who can do that kind of thing in this. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's Could the he? man. He's the man. He's the man. He's the man we'll for, call you. for him. Have you ever heard of Kenny Archer? No. Kenny's great. Kenny might do that, you know. All right. He's great. 
and he's a singer as well. He yodels and everything. Oh, excellent! No, he's great, and I think he, you know, Charlie, uh, 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 what's his name again? Mm-hmm. Kenny. Kenny Archer. Kenny would do that. Kenny uh-huh. would do a charity gig, wouldn't oh, he? Oh, very much so. He does he's he's a very nice, work. very good-hearted yes, man. Seriously. seriously, he is. Oh, that would be brilliant. He's your man, you know. I wonder. We'll, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll try and get Kenny for you. Right. And we'll ask him if he's interested. Uh-huh. Sean, will you get Kenny on well, the air? Could you put? Uh, see, I haven't got Kenny's phone number. Oh, Kenny, have you not? Kenny travels around. He's got a mobile. Could you put a call out for Kenny? Yeah, Kenny Archer, if he's listening, or anyone who knows Kenny, uh, give him a give him a ring and give him a shout and ask him to give us a ring at the program here, because we haven't got his phone number for some strange reason. But uh, apart from that, that's only an off. Uh, that's only a kind of an off chance mm-hmm. thing because Kenny may be doing something else or whatever. So let's put a call out for other people. Let's try and get you a selection of people. Kenny would be the man that you want. Oh, that would be brilliant. He's the man that you want. I'll tell you what, he's a good looking guy, you know. Oh, I have one of those already. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not speaking for you personally because oh, right. I know I can tell by your voice that you're tuck. Um, <laughs> or spoken for. But uh, there may be other bits of stuff hanging right. about. Do you know that? Would be a bit spare there. Yes, uh-huh. and it, you know, I'm not saying that you know cumbers full of them, but I'm saying it's only human nature. One or two girls, maybe you know, oh, fell off the wagon here and there. You know, maybe the odd divorcee, oh, the certainly. odd, yes, the odd rebound, mm-hmm. you know, the odd stray. But Kenny is married, Kenny's doesn't wife he? Will love you for that. No, I'm just saying that Kenny is a very good-looking guy, but he never yes. dabbles uh-huh. in the uh-huh. occult. Yeah. No, he never dabbles at all. I've seen women fall on their feet in front of him. All right. Uh, no, that's not right. Fall, uh, yeah. <clears throat> well, you see, this is the added attraction. If you've got an attractive caller, uh-huh. there's no point in having somebody up there with a plate like a face like a plate of mortal sins, is there? <laughs> I mean, you want someone there who's attractive to get the women in. I mean, I, <laughs> I would do it, but I'm not free. Right. Okay, let's see anyone out there apart from Kenny. If we can get Kenny, all the best. But uh, if we can't get him, maybe someone out there, or you know, maybe Kenny couldn't be bothered replying, you know, because he doesn't know any of us. Uh, so if anyone out there would care to be a caller at your barn dance, well, will, he, will you give them expenses? Oh, certainly, yes. Feed them and give them drink? Certainly. All right, then, okay. We'll leave your number there, and we'll, we'll uh, any, any calls we get, we'll pass them on to you. That would be wonderful. Okay, but we'll try and get Kenny for you and see what he has to say okay, for himself. thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Okay, now, bye. Bye. Bye, bye. I could have told you, Vincent, yeah. this world was never made yeah. for the likes of well, you. Well, Vincent needs your help. Hello, Vincent. Hello, Jerry. How uh, are you? Good I'm morning. Fine. fine, thank Jerry, you. Jerry, there's one thing. Could you help me? I'm looking for a curry teal water pump. If anybody would have one, please. I have to tell you that I got a man a cow tail water pump before. Well, I hope you can get me one, too. You're not the first to come here crying for a cow tail water pump. And I have to say to you, if I can do it once, by thunder, I can do it again. I a hope so, water pump, they're nice, aren't they? They are lovely, Jerry. Yes. I know where you'll get one without any bother. Well, I hope so. But the only thing is, you'll have to collect it in the middle of the night. Oh, well. it's, it's in the middle of Tomb Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> do you know that one? Uh, yes, I do, yes. But that, I don't think that... Is that a cowtail one? Uh, that's well, that one's well concreted down. The ball up in that one, Jerry. I say, but you need to do. You need a bit of jelly night for that one. Yeah, well, need a bit something. of the old Semtex. Um, <laughs> well, that is that a cow tail? Uh, yes, it is. Yes, it is a cow tail pump. Yes. Do you know, I I remember that pump so well because years and years ago, you know, before there was McDonald's and Kentucky Fried Chicken and and things that kept open all night, when uh, show band people, whenever they used to come home in the morning, you know, about six or seven o'clock in the morning, and you'd be travelling through the dawn maybe coming from somewhere like Cork, going to Derry Stoke, London Derry. There was no way you could get a bite to eat, or not even a bite to drink. Uh, sorry, a, a, a drop to drink. We used to wait for the, the pump at uh, Tomb, Tomb Bridge. And used to go out there and just pump away like mad. It was working then. I don't know if it's working now. Uh, well, I wouldn't care if it worked or not as long as it... Oh, you want it for de- uh, ornamental purposes? I want it for, yes, I want it for the garden, please, Jerry. Okay, well, where, whereabouts do you live? What area do you live in? Dungiven. Dungiven? Oh, not too far away from here. Not so far away, Jerry. The relics were through yesterday. Yes, I was at the relics. <laughs> I saw the relics Apparently, through yesterday. They're very disappointing. Apparently uh, sorry, the top, what? The top of the cow tail water topper pump is the hardest part to get. You can get a man phoned in there now from his mobile phone and he says <laughs> there's plenty of cow tail, tail pumps around, but it's getting the wee tap. That is right, yes. You can't right. get that. But that that is. Is. we don't know what that is. Maybe this man doesn't need the tab. Do you need I the tab? I need the complete pump, the, yes. The, All right, then. Okay. No, the top, it's the top. Put the oh, so the, the man phoning from his mobile phone, he yeah. can't help this man, really? No, he just says that he, he there's stacks of cow tails about. But it's this top. Stacks of cow tails about? Aye. But it's this top, whatever that is, he can't get. Do you know what the man's talking about there, sir? I know what the man's talking about, yes. The big top sits on top of the pump. Uh, that's right. All right, okay. Okay. Well, it's early days yet. Uh, we've just come on the air. I was a little later, little later than most, but uh, 
but we'll see what we can do. We'll see if we can get your coattail pop. I'm sure there's somebody out there who can help. That's Mr. very good. Thank okay, you very if much we hear anything, we'll, we'll pass the number straight on to you. It doesn't have to be in working order. No, no, no it doesn't have to no. be in working order. Right. No, he wants it for decorative, oh, ornamental sorry. purposes. Sorry, okay. You're going to put it in your, your, your garden, sir? Yes. Yeah, that'd be nice, garden. yeah. That'd be nice. Okay, so, then. We, we'll thank you very see. much, Jerry. We'll do the best we can. Thank you. Bye, now. There's another wee call for you there. Bye, pardon? Another wee call. Hello? Hello? Yes, good morning. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning, sir. Uh, do you we, need a cocktail pop? again, Jerry. Pardon? We are talking again. When did we talk before? Uh, what, about a month ago, Jerry, I rang you up concerning the cricket, the photograph of the cricket team, Jackie, McLean and Arne here. That's right, which went to a good home. Yes, and that's the girl got fixed up and was delighted with it. You're, so the, man, you're the man who had the cricket. The, that, that's right, I had the photograph oh, and, and gave the, it to well, Kenny good, McBride and Glen Arne. Good man, you gave it to her, she was really pleased at that. Very pleased with it, and you've done a good job again, Jerry. I'm on about another complaint here, Jerry. All right. Uh, I'm allowed to mention names here. You can mention whatever you like. <laughs> I want Don't to we mention the name of shops or anything? Oh, no, no, definitely not. Because you know what they're like? Yes, because okay. it's advertising. Oh, even if you're saying they're crap, don't be saying that. No, I wouldn't. Okay. I wouldn't even say that I own an antique shop here in Lar Larn, Jerry, you know? Well, you know the score, then. <laughs> okay. Jerry, I'll tell you, is I've had a problem. I've been here 22 years in the business. Yes. And I've had a problem referring to signs. I'm trying to get a sign up because... Uh, you haven't really been in Larne very much, Jerry, yourself in passing. I have to confess, I haven't spent a lot of time there. No. Well, no. there's there's a little shopping centre known as Riverdale yes. Shopping Centre. There's about eight shops, and they're facing the back of them towards the main street in Larne. Yes. So the people still yet who come into the town don't even know exist, Jerry. Well, why did they build a shopping centre and face it away from the main road? Now, you might ask the same thing. I so don't know why, but actually... anyway, unfortunately, that's the situation. Uh, car park all around it, free car park, and the only free car park that is in an hour outside the shop, Jerry. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that the DOE, here's the name coming up now, Jerry, will That's not okay. give us a sign. I have put it to council and so on, and they've refused to put a sign up. They won't let you put up a sign saying that this is a shopping centre? No, they won't. Well, you know, wouldn't and that be handy? Sorry? Wouldn't that be handy? It would be could very say good for business, but the thing really I'm on about is, Jerry, I took it upon myself, no doubt breaking the law, by putting up a sign a sign which is about 20 inches long, a wee piece of wood, mm -hmm. uh, three inches wide, and it says coffee shop on it. And I had this up outside, uh, a lamp post outside my shop, mm -hmm. and two gentlemen from the DOE, now I mean gentlemen, two workers, two decent fellas, I know them personally, yes. one of them then anyway, uh, came along and said, look, Jack, I'm sorry, but we're down to take this sign down. We were told and I had to it tied it. up with a piece of cord. Yeah. So it wasn't a real big bolt job. Right. So he says, but it's up to yourself. Do you want to take it down or do you want us to take it down? I says, look, I'll take it down. So my son took it down. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's sad that people try to make uh, make a living or try to survive in this world, and yet these men don't encourage you. All, all they have got here is three signs as you come into the Riverdale car park, and it says only Riverdale car park. It doesn't say Riverdale shopping centre or Riverdale shops or shops. I wonder why they're trying to keep it a secret from people. Uh, I do not know, Jerry. I wish they would tell me or even talk to me, because mm -hmm. I've rang several gentlemen uh, who's responsible for that up, and they, they seem to say, look, I don't know anything about it, and don't want to know anything about it. Maybe they, don't, maybe they want to keep tourists out. Uh, people I'd from the town. Maybe they don't want strangers in the town buying things that exactly. belong to local people. That's right, that's right. But who's the DOE? Pardon? The DOE, you say? Yeah. Why would they do a thing like that? I think they're sort of law on themselves, you know. Mm hmm Really? So they won't let you set up a sign which says this is the Riverdale Shopping Centre? No. That no. seems very odd indeed. I hesitate to get involved in this now because Mr. Coyle, he doesn't ring. He's afraid to ring people in authority. Yeah. Because they com might come back well, in him in a year's time. If you could ring the DOE in Ballymena and ask them why they wouldn't allow me to put signs up. They'd even pay for them, Jerry. Sign, it's okay. A what? Yeah. Uh, we're getting calls here to say if he makes a sign, a mobile sign, if he puts wheels on it. Oh, yes. He, 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 uh, that's okay. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that the answer to the If problem? he puts wheels on it? Whatever well, it is. The problem is, yeah. if you've got a trailer with wheels on it and a sign on your trailer, uh, you, it's legal. But it means you have to take the trailer home every night, Jerry. Yeah, because people will steal it. Yeah. So in other words, if you have a sign and it's on wheels, yeah. and you take it home every night when people aren't there, mm -hmm. it's okay. This is like uh, Catch-22, isn't it? Isn't it? This is weird, but you can't have a sign that hasn't got wheels on it that people can't steal. No, that's The only right. sign you can have is one that you... People can steal, so you have to take it home every night. So all all I'm asking it. for is a sign up where the Riverdale car park sign is. Mm -hmm. But there's no sign whatsoever around this area, Jerry, to say, you know, that there's there's a shopping centre here. 
And I can assure you, you know, if you come down, you'd have trouble finding this jury. Um, right. If you do manage to find this jury, we've got a nice wee coffee room at the back, homemade broth a lot. Okay, so, so who's that? Who's in charge of that? We have to find out the answer to this. Who's, who's in charge of? Who's it? Uh, not the person. What's, where's the area again? DOE where? It's DOE Ballymena. Ballymena, Mr. Yeah. Coyle. Mm-hmm. I know. No, I, know. I, I can't do it in here. If I had no, a phone, I, I would do it. I if I had a phone, I would do it. Right. Why don't you ring them up and tell them that uh, I want to speak to someone there about that? Give us any. Tell them why they can't put a sign up. Is there any any? No, please. Do. Individual in particular. No individual. No, no, we don't want to hear. For? The no. man in charge of signs. Ask for them. Tell them that this is the radio. Yeah. If say, I ring the say DOE. Say this is the wireless here. Right. Uh, wireless here. A man on want to know. Talk me through this. Man wants to know why we can't put up a sign saying this is the Riverdale Shopping Centre in Lard. Okay. And there's uh, uh, that can't be wheeled away at night. Just ask him that. Can, oh, right. can someone help us? Now, then, leave the rest to me because I'm used to dealing with these people. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. We'll try and find out, sir, for you. Jerry, that's great. Okay. You're doing a great job and I listen to you every day. Thank you. God Keep bless it you. Up. You we and Mr. Coyle. Yes, we shall get to the bottom of this. Yes. I, but I know he won't ring because <laughs> he's afraid of men in suits. But I'm not a bit afraid of them because I used to have a suit myself. <laughs> All right, then. Thanks, Jerry. Okay. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Would you take a man on three who's who needs so to talk bye. to you? Okay. Why wouldn't you put a sign up at the Riverdale Shopping Centre? Hello? Hello? Why wouldn't you put a sign up... Oh, sorry, you're not the... Are you from the DOE? Uh, no. I'm, I'm not, sorry. I'm not, Jerry. Sorry. No. I'm sorry. Yeah, right. Can I help you? Uh, yeah, Seamus Moran here, Jerry. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Seamus, I thought you were an ordinary person. <laughs> Seamus, I have to say, I'm very I'm pleased at the success of your uh, song, The Broken Link. Thank you very much, And Jerry. may I say, I get phone calls daily. Uh, from all kinds of people, yes, all over the country, and indeed a couple from England, yes, inquiring about this, and I'm sure you've had some uh, feedback yourself. I have had a bit of a feedback, yes, I, I certainly had. Now, one That's of the main things that the people are asking me is where. Now, you, can you say this? To, uh, now, I want you to say something. Yes. I want you to answer a question, which I will give to you, and I want you to tell the truth. <laughs> Do I have any financial interest in your well-being at all? Totally and absolutely none. If I you sell records, will I get a single shilling? Total and absolutely not. Why not? <laughs> no, I have nothing to do with you professionally in any way. That is correct. Okay, right. That is correct. Just get that out of the way. Yeah. Was, uh, was there somebody kicking? Uh, was there somebody interested like that you were? No, they're accusing me of making money. Oh, I see. Because they think they say to yourself, you must have some interest. You know, many people are here oh, in Northern Ireland. Yeah. They're so hateful. Yes. They think because you like something, you must be making money. <laughs> you don't understand that I have an artistic soul. <laughs> no, yes. You don't know that. 100%. Now, the people want to know where they can buy your record. Where is it on sale? Well, Because well, it's not on sale everywhere. It's not on sale everywhere, Jerry. Don't no, tell me, no. Uh, if, if, uh, somebody like myself uh, just doesn't maybe put them into every record shop. Uh, they're in Virgin and Belfast. Yes. Uh, hopefully by next Monday they'll be in Virgin and Derry. Oh, I'll run up and get two of those. <laughs> And they're in the Pop Men and Antrim. That's down uh, with Ronnie there in the Pop Men and Antrim. Yes. They're in Laws in Ballymena. That's the news agency on Brashean Street in Ballymena. Right. They're in the Spar Shop in Tim. Yes. They're in Max. Where's that? Candy Arcade in Coleraine. Oh, yes. I think Jim Lynch maybe runs that place down there. I know that place, yes. Him contacted me anyhow. And they're in Desi's there in Sound Around in Derry. Well, I'll tell you what. That's the province covered. Well, that's... <laughs> That's not bad. Fair enough. Things are going well. Listen, I want to ask you something else too. Yes. Um, have you ever performed this in public? Uh, funny enough, no. Would you like to? Uh, well, <laughs> health, would you like to? Health problems uh, uh, prevent me from. Oh really? Yes. I didn't know that. Yes. I didn't know that. I mean, yeah. did you, what, what kind of health? Oh, just to have the, uh, had a heart attack some time ago. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know that, Seamus. So, and, uh, so public performance would would probably get you too excited. I, well, I don't know about excited, but uh, I have to give myself a chance. <laughs> well, don't you worry about getting excited because it's only a BBC OB. Yes. There'll be nobody there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to ask you. We're down at Warren Point on the 15th of June. I thought you might want yes. to be interested in coming along. Well, sure, I could ring you back on that, chair. Yes, think about it. Yes. Think about it. Or yes. else, why did, you, why did you just come along anyway? Uh-huh. Hey, for the yep. crack. And if, yep. you want, if you want to go up and sing it, and you can if you don't want to, that's all right. That's fine. All right, then. That's fine, Jerry. Well, listen, the best of luck to you, and I have to say that uh, after all the crap that you've recorded over the years... <laughs> yeah, I uh, certainly <laughs> would agree with you there. You see, you're like the monkey with a typewriter. <laughs> you see, eventually he's going to write Hamlet. <laughs> no, no, I'm Well, listen, joking. Jerry, there's one or two... Pages. You uh, share that programme uh, with Sean Coyle, do you? Or I don't is, share is it. Is he no, a right-hand man? 
Is he a right hand man, or is uh, could you yeah. fill us in a wee bit on that? Because I'm, people no. around me are not dead sure. No, no. I don't want to. Uh, you I, don't I, even. I, no, 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 no. Okay. All right. No okay, sir. All right. There was your chance to tell the people what you actually do. Would you talk to Barn Dance Ronnie? Barn Dance Ronnie. Whenever you're finished. No, no, no. I can't because I have to play the broken link after. But sure, shame is all. Shame is all. Wait till after. Shame is all. Not wait. This is Barn Dance Ronnie who's been waiting. Tell Barn Dance Ronnie that I'll speak to him at four minutes past eleven. Once you speak to the once you speak to the artist. You must play this record. But this is another artist. Yeah, he'll have to wait. To but Seamus has on played. first. Barn dance, Ronnie ah. wants to help the midwife, and well, Seamus would not object to a midwife being helped. Certainly not. There you are. <laughs> well, he'll have to wait until four minutes past eleven. No, why don't you and Seamus wait? Seamus has plenty of turns. The midwife only got one turn and yep. put her on. Is that midwife, right, Seamus? Let the midwife yeah. will have to wait. No, no. no you can't I would talk say to the that any, anyone listening to this program would agree with me no. and Seamus that the midwife, Ronnie, no. must come on. No, whenever you talk to the artist, you have to play the... the Barn uh, dance, Ronnie should go on. No. Well, no, 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 I turned them off. Let's just sort out here where the boss comes in that. That's what I was saying to you there earlier on, Jerry. Okay, it's just a question yeah. of who makes the decisions here. Yes. Right, now he wants to hear Barn dance, Barney, <laughs> whatever you call him. Yes. And I want to play the broken link. Yes. And guess what's going to happen? Don't know. <laughs> That's what's going to bye happen. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> All you are the wickedest link. Goodbye to your idle black toes. Goodbye to the good red shirt that I bought at a marks. A tie to match in a pair of lovely socks. Everything she asks, you're me idle brain blocked. Oh, you are the wickedest link. Goodbye. I was really hyped very high When they told me I could try To won ten grand on a TV show But there was a lot of things that I didn't really know For she made me shake from my head to my toes Oh, you are the weakest link, please go Oh, you are the weakest link, goodbye To your idle black toes, goodbye to my good red shirt that I bought out of marks A tie to match and a pair of lovely socks Everything she asks, you're me old brain blocked Oh, you are the weakest link, goodbye Oh, she asked me things that were tough Halfway through I thought that I had had enough Up her intimidating eyes and her old girly smiles And the turning and the turning of her old black cloak And me sweating and wishing that her old jaw was broke for I was a wickedest link, no joke. Oh, you are the wickedest link, goodbye. To your old black clothes, goodbye. To my good red shirt that I bought at a marks. A tie to match and a pair of lovely socks. Everything she asks, you're me old brain blocked. Oh, you are the wickedest link, goodbye. Then came the walk of shame When she told me to go him Through the big bright lights Sure it must have been a sight For my brain began to squelch God I'm glad I wasn't Welsh For I was the weakest link Goodbye Oh you are the weakest link Goodbye To your old black clothes Goodbye to my good red shirt that I bought out of marks A tie to match and a pair of lovely socks Everything she asks, you're me old brain blocked Oh, you are the weakest link, goodbye For I was the weakest link, sure I am the weakest link And I'd rather do ten years in the dirty rotten clink Than to ever see again her a right I give a wink And say you are the weakest link, goodbye For I was the weakest link, goodbye that's Seamus Marn, uh, Broken Link, that's called. I'd like to say hello, and that's for a special request for the staff of the Porter Down Library, which has been formally opened uh, today, Thursday the 31st of May. And the person who writes to me, Stanley Hamilton, I read this the other day, but I thought it would be good to read it again, and he wants that played for the truly first-class team of lady librarians and ancillary staff who perform their duties with the utmost professionalism. Right. So there we go. Speaking of professionals, I read a poem the other day which a lot of you liked uh, very much. It's called Do You Remember? It's about, well, it's, about, it's a nostalgic kind of a thing, really. And I said that I didn't know who the author 
was, and I must apologise very much, because I, in the back of my mind, I remembered that I read that before, but I wasn't quite sure. The author is, of course, a lady called Anne Marie Campbell, and it is from she's from Antrim, as far as I know, and uh, she wrote a book uh, with, with uh, all kinds of odds and ends, poetry, all kinds of stuff, which is called Ice Cream and Onions. And I got a copy of this book a while back. I think it was 1998, about two or three years ago. And I'm sorry, uh, Anne-Marie, I didn't remember that. But I've got another copy of it here. You've sent it to me. Thanks very much. It's called Ice Cream and Onions. And it's very, very good. And the poem is called Do You Remember? And I'm going to read it again today because a lot of people ask me to read it again. We'll read it after the news. Not directly after the news, but shortly after the news. <sighs> Seamus hasn't got it down in Lurgan. Put it, get his video down to, or his CD down to Lurgan. Yeah, right. So it goes on, it goes on. That's all we have time for until the news comes up at 11 o'clock. I've got other things to read here, but I don't want to start anything now because I have no time to finish it, as Magnus Magsman used to say, before they banished him away off to Ireland to make way for Johnny Vaughan. We'll be back at four minutes past 11. It's 11 o'clock. 92 to 95 FM. And 1341 medium wave. BBC Radio Ulster. Good, afternoon. Good, good morning. At the news desk, this is Darren Vaughan. The First Minister, David Trimble, has said that today's IRA statement is a reaction to pressure from his party. He says that although no progress has been made on putting arms beyond use, it shows his party is following the right policy. The Republican group issued a statement saying that it's met with the decommissioning body four times since March. The statement follows the International Arms Inspector's report yesterday that they'd made a third visit to a number of IRA weapons dumps which had remained secure. The IRA leader, uh, the, I beg your pardon, the DUP leader, the Reverend Ian Paisley, says he doesn't believe the IRA statement indicates anything new. There's no progress whatsoever. Uh, in fact, there's just a reiteration that except you do what we say, we will be no, moving no farther. And you've got to deal with the police and you've got to demilitarise and so on and so forth. So they are actually putting on the table what they say the government should do, what they say everybody should do, uh, and they're doing nothing. A 25-year-old man and a 16-year-old youth have been treated in hospital for cuts and bruising to their legs and arms following a paramilitary-style assault in Uri last night. They were in a house at Parkhead Crescent when a number of masked men burst in and attacked them with iron bars and sticks. During the incident, a gun was held against the head of one of the victims. The public inquiry has opened into the death of an eight-year-old girl who was subjected to months of abuse by her great-aunt. Victoria Clombier died of hypothermia in North London last year. She had 128 separate wounds and marks on her body. Her great-aunt and the aunt's boyfriend are in jail for the murder. The inquiry will look into the work of the social services, the NHS and the police. Its chairman, Lord Leeming, said it would be complex but above all open and independent. It will consider the actions of staff employed by a large number of public authorities and the way in which those authorities managed and coordinated their activities. Its work is important because we are charged with making recommendations that may affect the way these agencies carry out their functions in future. A man has been charged with animal cruelty following the death of a Labrador puppy which was doused in petrol and set on fire. Gavin Sharp, who's 23 and from Barnsley, is expected to appear in court tomorrow. Insurance companies are getting together to launch a crackdown on motorists who drive without insurance. The Motor Insurers Information Centre estimates that one in 20 drivers are uninsured and they say it costs the industry £400 million a year. All the insurance companies have agreed to hold information about all policyholders in one central system. Police in Texas are investigating complaints that the twin daughters of President George W. Bush tried to buy alcohol illegally at a restaurant in Austin. Barbara and Jenna Bush are 19, two years under the legal age for buying alcohol. It's the second time Jenna Bush has been accused of underage drinking. Last month, she was prosecuted for drinking in a bar. And a look at the weather, bright this morning with some rain, cloud and drizzle moving in by this afternoon, temperatures reaching 16 degrees. BBC Radio Ulster.
Travel News. Heading into Belfast, there are long delays on the M1 as a cement lorry has broken down at Broadway. The queues are back past Stockman's Lane, so if you're on the motorway and trying to get into the city, it may be advisable to exit at an earlier junction. Traffic controls are in place on the Station Road and the Glasslillan Grove area in Green Island as repairs to the footpaths are being carried out. And similar work is taking place on Davy Street in the Irish Quarter South area of Carrickfergus. Deirdre Harshaw with the travel. The story of my life, exit at an earlier junction. BBC Radio Foil. And BBC Radio Ulster. Hey! Jerry Anderson. Hey, 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 hey. Welcome back, Jerry Anderson here. It's nearly five minutes past 11 o'clock. As again, I keep saying this, I keep, I'm keep i tired saying it, and I hope you don't f- you're fed up me saying it, but I have to say it all the time because people don't know. The number to ring if you want to contact this program is 08459 Email jerry.anderson at bbc.co.uk. bbc.co.uk. jerry.anderson at bbc.co.uk. Let God take over for a minute or two. There's a bird in the roof below me. Knows nothing about buying things. About looking good and successful living. Or the ads a few pop star sings. There's a tree moving in the breeze. Waiting for its buds to bloom. There's life confined to what life's about. Contracting in a mother's womb. It's a beautiful day There's a sprinkle of all that is true On the ark of God's smile We've been given the wonder of you Two magpies are feeding their families That's supposed to prophesy joy But there isn't three and there isn't four I don't know if you're a girl or a boy but they're oblivious to the sound of the city. They live far from the clutter and fuss. These noises we've made to distance our souls from these things that are happening to us. Well, I picture fate in two hours of sunlight. Well, I flower bloom. Shower of rain. Well, words make you feel feel that I love you, or will I just hold you again and again? There's me and you and someone else, and love knotting the ties that bind. There's awe and wonder and fascination and the blessings of this life of mine. And I'm standing in this holy place to gaze on the world's most beautiful face, leaning on the promises of Jesus' grace, licking my lips with a sprinkle of its taste. It's a beautiful day, there's a sprinkle of all that is true. Of God's smile, we've been given the wonder of you. Well, I picture fame in two hours of sunlight. Well, I flower bloom in one shower of make you feel, feel that I love you, or will I just hold you, again and
Hey, that's BBC uh, Radio Ulster's uh, Steve Stockman and a gentleman called Samuel Hill. That's an album called Grace Notes by, and they call themselves Stevenson and Samuel. Sorry, Stevenson and Samuel. That's a song called Sprinkle. Now, I'm not a great man for the old Born Again Christian records, but I have to say that sounds good to me. It certainly does. Pardon? Is there a photograph of your father and Thomas Cook's travel agency in Belfast? I really don't know. Oh, did somebody say there was? Yeah. Really? Uh, either it's you or it's your father, he says, but the resemblance. Uh, they, they think it's you, but it's a wee bit too old for you. Really? Yeah. My father didn't really look like me, you know. Right. Uh, well, he did in a way, I suppose. I never saw the resemblance, but maybe a lot of people other did. I, yeah. He was much better looking than I was. Right. I don't know, maybe it is him. Yeah. I must have a peek in. Well, where is that? Where Thomas, Thomas Cook, Cook's where? travel agency in Belfast. So that's where he is. Yeah. All right then. Okay. Uh, would you talk to you? Barnhill Barney? What do you call him? Yes, in a couple of minutes. Cornhill. Barn. Barn. <laughs> Cornhill Barney. Yeah. R- Ronnie. I've got to talk to you, Ronnie. Okay. Right. Hello. Hello, Ronnie. Hello. Yes, Ronnie. How are you? Right, Jerry. How are you? Fine, thanks. Right. Well, say it's a great honour to be on your show. Well, thank you. It's nice for you to say that. But you know, any dogs ours can get on here, really. Well, I tried to get on before. Well, it's it's hard yeah. to get on sometimes if you don't get through. Well, it's good when you I got get, through, as Hugo, but as Hugo was, says, the phone's a jam. The phone's a Was looking for somebody to do a barn dance, and I rang in, left the number, but nobody got back to me. That's a par for the course. But that's understandable, you know. I'm sorry about that. This happens occasionally. Uh, what about the barn dance? You, do, can you help that woman at all? Yeah, well, I do a lot of barn dances. You know, I actually play, but I have three different callers that, you know, I would play for. Not all at the same time, mind you, but, you, you do know, they call on me to, you know, I provide the music. They call on you to call? You, you're they not call a, on me to play the music. To play the music? The, They're not the ca- calling. You're not a caller yourself? I'm not a caller, but, you know, I have, I have three callers that I could... You, Get, you've, you know, if anybody was stuck. Well, there you are. You, you have access to callers. I didn't realise there was a lot of callers required in Northern there's, Ireland. There's not a lot of them about their, their like, hands, teeth. Uh-huh. Well, you so, know, so there's, these barn dances have taken off, and they're very popular with weddings and anniversaries and things like that. Do you know what this means? They're getting, it means that George Jones will be doing one soon. Uh, well, I wouldn't be surprised. Anything that there's any money but, in. Uh, Hugo, Hugo has mentioned I'm my sure name he, a few times. I'm you know, sure he has. Uh, uh, tell me this. Have, what do you? What, sorry, you know the way what? people ring in to, you know, to advertise uh-huh. maybe a, a birthday party or a function, uh-huh. and my name goes under Hey Fever. I call myself. You call yourself Hey so Fever. So he uh, right. you know, thought this was a great name, Hey Fever. Well, Hugo very suffer- appropriate for a barn dance. Hugo suffers from it. That's probably why I identified with it. Uh, so you're a hay fever. So what are you, are you personally hay fever yourself? Or have you other men? Well, I used to have a, an elderly man. He was 99. He just died last year and he played the fiddle. Well, he had a good ending, um, hadn't he? I tried to get him on uh, the radio a few times. You know, he like for his age, at 99, he was very good. He was still fiddling away, was he? He was at 99. My God. Um, he used to go everywhere with me. You know, we travelled all over Northern Ireland, and we even were as far away as Athlone. What was his name? And uh, but unfortunately, he died. Yeah. What just was what was his before name? Before he reached his hundredth birthday. Oh, that's a shame. He didn't get the telegram from the Queen. Well, a lot. How far was he short of his hundredth birthday? Um, th- about three months. Less oh, than three that's months. That's an awful shame. He made it into the new year in January, and just died. Uh, his birthday would have been in March. This this year? No, that was last year. Last year, so he was born in 1900? Yep, he was. My God, and he he lived the entire century. He did. He just he made it into the, the new millennium, but, you know, that was a bad winter, and they went for his chest. So he... And that just he, finished him off. He, he lived every year of the 20th century. And he was he alive did. every year of the 20th century. And he just looked forward to going out, you know, on a Friday or Saturday night with myself. That's all he looked forward to, to you know, to get playing his fiddle. Mm-hmm. What was the man's name? Tom. Tom Hill. Tom Hill. And where, yeah. was, where was Tom Hill from? He was originally from Island McGee. Ah, oh, great. I can't believe that. He, he was alive 
every year of the century. Yeah. Every single year. You name any year of the century, Tom Hill was there. 1901, 1914. Well, and as fresh as it is, I... Is that right? Did he, tell me about him. What kind of habits did he have? Did he smoke or drink or anything? Well, he would have told you, you know, people used to ask him, you know, when we went to play anywhere, um, you know, that have said, what's the secret of, you know, long life? And yes. He used to say, you know, plenty of women and... Oh, really? Plenty of whiskey and... Really? Although the man never drank. Well, but, you know, he, he loved to talk to people and... Did you know, he take a wee smoke there? He didn't smoke. Did he ever I think smoke? He, he might have smoked years ago, but... Um, he was as fit as a fiddle, and to plenty of women, plenty of whiskey. There's hope for me yet. Oh, I, well, he said this was this was the secret, you know. I've always said that, you know. See how these people sit around looking out the window, eating nuts and milk. It's no good. You have to but, go out and uh, enjoy yourself. Not a, a great, right there. You know, you got to told you some yarns. Mm. Do you know what Perry Como said? He died there recently. He was 88 or something like that. He said the secret of a long life was plenty of Italian food and lying around on the sofa. That's right. Plenty of spaghetti and pasta. And lying about. None of this jogging. None of that. You never see 98-year-old men jogging, do you? No, I think it may be hard enough for them to jog at that age. It would be all right. But so, well, it, it must have been a privilege for you to know that man. Oh, it was. Yeah. Oh, I would, uh, some great times, you know, playing. Would he have an eye for the women there? Well, he, his, his wife had died um, yes, but, yes, a yes. few years ago. Yes, but he would still would he have a roving eye there. Oh, no, he just, he, he wasn't like that at all, but he, he loved the yarn, he loved the chat mm -hmm. to the woman, you know. Ah, uh, well. But, uh, he would have, every time, you know, we would have been out anywhere and he got talking to some of the girls, he would have invited them back to his house. They said, you, you know, if you're ever in the area, he'd give them his name and address and right enough they did call with him. I do that too, but it doesn't and work for just, me. He just loved the company and loved the chat. That's what they call in America, working the skirt. Uh, yeah. Well, so what do you play yourself? Do you play the guitar? Or do you play keyboards? I play the accordion. Good man. Good man. What kind of accordion is it? Quarter vox, something like that, or? Well, it's an Excelsior Midi Midi vox. Oh, they're good. They're very powerful, aren't they? They're so, so they're all. Yeah. So you do that, up. and the men call in front of you. Yeah. And, and and you know what to play. You know all the different dances. Well, I wouldn't say I know the dances, but I know the tunes. For instance, what what uh, can you remember? Some of the things that they call and the the, the tunes that you play along with them. I mean, if well, they go, "Hey, don't say no," and what do they shout then? Do they shout uh, um, all around the house or whatever you call that stuff. I don't know. Go and name me the galloping gay Gordons or whatever you call well, them. Well, uh, we do the gay Gordons what and the Circassian Circle. And the, what, what do you play with for the Circassian Circle? Um, could play the Irish washerwoman or And what else do you do? That's it. That's good. That's a great gig for you, yeah. Jigs and, you know, Scotland the Brave, that type of thing. The Gay Gardens. They don't call them the Gay Gardens anymore. They call them the Happy Gardens. Aye. Yes, I think I'll probably be more appropriate. Oh, so I'll tell you what then. There's a gig going for a woman out there who's looking for a caller. I'm sure she's looking at a caller. She's looking at a man with a... An accordion, too. I'll tell you what we'll do. Mr. Coyle, do you have that lady's number? Yes, I've sorted things out. Oh, you've already done we, that? Yes, with Ronnie. It's not like you. Yeah. Where's the man in the DOE? No sign of no him? No sign of him. Nah, I didn't but, think there would be. Yeah. There's, a, you... there's a cowtail pump in the Lockview Garden Centre in Lurgan for 120 quid. Is that a fact? It might be a little dear for the man. Well, I'm just letting you know. Smacks to me like a little too a, many a, reddies. A man, a man from Belfast phoned and he said he agrees with the DOE not, not allowing that man to put up his signs willy-nilly. What's, what's his name, willy-nilly? No, but well, I know what he's saying. What is Willie Nilly? What is Willie Nilly's reasons for not wanting he to put that up if, a sign? He says, uh, for instance, uh, someone opens a shop and the first thing they do is stick out a like a sandwich board. They stick signs out, and they never take into account uh, blind people coming along and tripping over these things and knocking under these things. Well, it's, it's it's assumed that blind people will not be able to read the signs, and it's assumed that if the sign is left on the footpath, blind people a, might trip over. Yeah, but not it. Just what we're talking that about alone. is something on the wall that says. Here's a shopping centre. Yeah, but there are too many signs he's saying. There are far too many signs I know, but uh, there may be too many. So if, if there's too many, does it mean that they, there can be none at all? I mean, if, you, if you've got a shopping centre... I mean, why am I arguing with you about this? You don't care anything about these Well, they're trying to well. change the law. But why don't they just say, here's Randall's the Town? the other night. Why don't you, you say, here's... watching the news, the six o'clock news... 
Yeah, but they told, they told, they talked about that. Is that where people sit around a desk and tell you things at yes, nine o'clock and yes, six o'clock? Yes. yes. Well, maybe I'm just wanting to know why they won't because put people up a are sign. fed up with just uh, on on the motorways with the motorway cafes. The you no, know, the drive-in jobs. You no, know, those motorway. Yes. And they say that there should be competition. And the likes of Sainsbury's and people like that, they say that we've got big shopping centres and they're just in around there. No, you never see them. They're stuck in, and there's no signposts on the motorways for their lovely big shopping centres. And they say they want this. They want the law changed because in America you have the, you have the choice, as you know yourself. Yes. You lived in America and in yes. Canada. Yes. I and uh, you know all about signs and all. I'm very familiar with the signing process. And as you know, uh, if you're driving down a big motorway in America, you say, "Oh, look, there's a uh, an Eaton House. Ah, we'll carry on. We'll get another one." And you, they're all over the place, but and and and. I and always like Wendy's. I liked Wendy's. Wendy's is good. Yeah. yeah. There's another place too that I liked, but I can't remember it. But anyway, that's Gee. neither here nor there. That's neither here nor there. You're right. I'm. Uh, let me just finish talking to this man here. Okay, we'll uh, we we'll pass you. Have you got information for this man about the lady who wants the caller? Yeah. Hello. What? Yes, okay, we've got, so we've, we, we'll pass your information on to this lady and maybe she'll give you a ring. And if anyone else is looking for a man to play and, and maybe you've access to a c- couple of callers, maybe a, a barn dance caller, maybe... maybe Certainly, you'll be in yes. I just kind of plug uh, Action Cancer. They have a, you know, they have a, a relay team that, you know, every year in September, you know, they have up at the Mary Peters track. Yes. Now, I play at that. Mm-hmm. You know they have you know do that for um, do a couple of charity things. Excellent. And um, you know that's one of them. So you know they always raise a lot of money over the two days. Okay. And um, Sean was saying there that he got the hold of Kenny Archer, but I know Kenny. Oh, you, you know, know Kenny, yeah, yeah. You know I've played with Kenny before. Mm-hmm. And um, you know he plays the accordion like myself. He doesn't. Does he? I didn't but know the, that. Sorry? I didn't know Kenny played the accordion. Well, there you are now. You I didn't know that. You learn something every day. Mm-hmm. That's what they say about an accordion. Well, what's the the gentleman... No, I, I can't say that. What's this somebody used to say about bagpipes? <laughs> you know a lot of people don't like bagpipes. So I was reading somewhere the other day that a person said something about bagpipes. He said, the thing about ba- the, the most positive things about bagpipes is at least they don't smell. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh, okay, then we'll pass that on to the lady and let's see. If anyone else is looking for a man to play and looking for a, a, a caller for a barn dance, you're the man to contact. Yeah, that's, that's we, that. we, we have your number here. Distance, no problem. Who knows, someday soon you'll be on the waterfront. Mm. Can okay. I mention um, Bally Carey? Yes, okay, wherever that I, is. I, I don't know if there's many of my family listen to your show. Right. You know, the, their, um, see, my humour would be similar to your own and they don't like my humour. Well, nobody but, likes mine uh, either, so don't worry about that. So uh, that's a nice way of saying that, you know, they're not so keen on your humour, but oh, I, no I know there's a me. lot of people in Ballycarry listen to your show. Well, that's So good. I'd just like to say hello to them. And I say hello to them too. And um, anybody else that knows me that is listening, you okay. know. Okay, well, sure. Long may you play your accordion and long may the men call in front of you. Okay, Jerry. And long may your, your dance barn. Okay. Enjoy the banter with... You and Sean, keep it up. I, I'm going to stop it soon. I'm fed oh, up. Oh, no, keep it up. All right, then, I'll keep it up. You'd ruin the show <laughs> if you stopped it. Oh, 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 all right, then. Thanks very much. Right, Jerry. Okay. Bye. 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 He I'm said I ruined it. Ah, I'll ring you back, Alan. Okay, give me a couple of minutes. Okay, Alan. All right, bye. Bye. He's, he said I'd ruin the show if I stopped talking to you. I'm of the opinion that I've ruined it because <laughs> I started talking to you. Right. Uh, where are you now? Uh, I've tracked down Kenny. But could you talk to a man, Mark, there first? Uh, Mark will have to wait until after this record. Kenny's drawn silage. Is he? Aye. I didn't know he was an artist. And he's, un- he's unavailable. Does he do the call? No, I've got, well, whenever we get him, you've got to talk to him right away because he's, he's drawn silage to a man. He's drawn silage to a man? Aye. What does that mean? He's drawn silage to... Oh, he's working at silage for a man. Yes. Why don't you try and speak English? That's what Kenny said. Ah, but Kenny doesn't speak. Kenny's also Scot, for right. God's sake. We're, we're he's very high pitched. I know, he's talking he's like that. I know, he's even higher than that. He's higher, God. Aye. Well, tell, put him on right away. I bet you, Mark's there now, you see. Well, I'll, I'll talk to Mark Would in a you minute. promise, Mark? Ah, right. Hello, Mark. You see, he's nobody there, there at all. Too. Hello, Mark. Hello, Jerry. Sorry about that. Uh, we Not a, a problem. Optimal. 
altercation there. I'm try, I keep trying to play these records and I can't play them. I, I, I don't blame you personally, it's the staff I blame here. Well, what can we do for you today, sir? Well, hopefully you'll be able to help me. Um, mm-hmm. You're my last chance. Yes. I'm trying to obtain a copy of a film that was aired on TV a few years ago. Yes. Um, I've been in contact with UTV, ITV, um, BBC, etc. Wasting your time. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, um, I actually phoned the show last week, and the young lady I was speaking to was very helpful and gave me the telephone number of the British Film Commission, I think it was. Right, that's right. But what we've actually found out is the film was um, it was actually made in the States for television, so it was never produced on video. Oh, I'm right. just hoping that somebody might have a copy that was actually maybe taped off the television that was shown. All right. Well, what was the film? Right. The Carpenter, or the Karen Carpenter story. Oh, yes, of course. Um, um, Fiance's a big, big fan, but trying to actually get a copy of the tape is impossible at the moment. This was a dramatization of their lives. Yeah. A dramat- well, not, not a documentary, of course. Uh, no. It's a dramatization. That's All right. I, I th- you know, I have a feeling that rings a bell with me. I think I came across that at some stage. Well, I obviously haven't got a copy of it, but, you know, I think I've, I've, saw, I've seen a bit of that. All right, then. Uh, anyone out there who's got a copy of any kind of copy at all, VHF, obviously, um, uh, that's what you want. Oh, the Karen it? Carpenter story. Right. Well, cost doesn't matter. Sam, that came to get it. Oh, moment. don't say that. <laughs> Never say that. Never say that. That's what people say to me. Uh, I get a terrible time, you know, uh, you know, being a star. Uh, when I go in for something, to buy anything, people often say to me, for instance, if I go in to get a, a tire or something, they'll say to me, uh, do you want a remold? Or do you want, uh, and I'll say, well, what, what, what price is that? Say, oh, your money doesn't matter to you, boy. Never you know? thought it would have. Ah, uh, you know. And I, I see whenever I hear that, I go straight out and say, well, thanks, I'll go elsewhere. <laughs> because it means they're going to do you. No, yeah. don't you say that. You, you're prepared to pay, but you don't want to pay through the nose for it. Uh, but you will prepare. You're prepared to pay through the nose of it if you have to. It's well, for the current. Th- oh, what? In Belfast, Black what? Star Albert Bridge Road in Belfast should be helped. Should be. The able man to help that said gentleman. that, as far as he knows, it has not been released. Um, what uh, did he try the Black Star? Why doesn't he ring it? Well, exactly. Do you know Black Star? Don't you? I've tried every... Um, just the first place you would go, Blackstar. Did he try Blackstar? Blackstar is on the internet, for God's sake. Did That's he the try first... it? Yes. Did, uh, let me, I bet you... Have you tried Blackstar? I have. You see? That's the first was, thing you do. It was never released in video. Well, listen. Listen, you two. Yes. There's a man drawing silage, and he's pulled off the road, and he wants to tack. That sounds like Kenny That's Archer. I All just right. have to wait like everyone right. else. Right. This man, it's important that I finish the okay. conversation but with this man. But wouldn't you, wouldn't you have a three-way? I'm too old. I'm too old for that. <laughs> <laughs> that was when I was younger. Um, all right then. Uh, you, you've, you've tried. Pl- okay. All we can do is ask out there if anyone's got a copy of it, or if anyone who knows. Have you tried any of these Z shops, as they call them, in the Amazon, in I've, America? I've tried the internet. Um, as I say, it was never released even in the states. All right. Okay. Um, I know it was last heard in 1993 by um, another television station based in the Ormore Road, but... It could well be a UTV, maybe. Quite possibly. <laughs> you see, what, what happens there, you see, there could be other, uh, there could be other big uh, Karen Carpenter fans, or Carpenter's fans who would, who would have taped that and kept it, and who could give you a copy of it. Well, that's what I'm hoping for, because when I checked with the channels, um, they've actually, all of them have told me that they have actually lost the rights to it now, so yeah. it will not be aired again. All right, okay. Okay, well, let's hope that someone out there... We've got, we've got it for you. Well, if you'll take a copy off the television, would that be all right, Mark? That would be amazing. Right. There's That's a gentleman what he wants. called Paul Elliman, who phoned in from Belfast, who's got it, and I'm going to talk to you in a minute or two, and I'll give you Paul's phone number. You phone Paul, and he'll make a copy of the sanity. There that we are. The job's good. done. Thank the you job. very much. I think all that time you spent talking to UTV and the BBC, all you had to do was ring here. <laughs> you know now in future what to do, never mind do. with the others. I do, Jerry. There you go. We, uh, you give, Sean will give you the phone number. The man's got it. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Not, no problem. See you later. Cheers. Bye. Bye. That's great when a plan works out. Hello, good morning, Kenny. Ah, uh, good morning, Jay. I believe you're pulling the silage. I am indeed. Is that the expression? Uh, no, cutting silage or cutting blowing silage would be the Blowing expression. silage. Now, yes. a lady came on and she was wanting to know if a man would uh, call at her barn dance. And That's you're, right. the, you're the first man that came to mind. Have you ever I done heard that? you. I heard you. Have you ever I, done that? Thank you, ma'am. No, I haven't got her number. But would have you, you ever done that? Can you do that? Oh, of 
I can do. <laughs> I, I thought that. <laughs> now, what Hold on, th- man. Hold on one minute. Right. Hold on. Right. Right, come away now. Right. I've Can got stop. I've got stop to you. By whom? By the, the Sally's man has stopped the tractors. All right, then. I, this is, sounds like a busy day for you. Maybe no, I should go I'm away. I'm all right. I'm all right now. I've got out. He's got an arm man going. He's blown away into an hour trailer here. All right, then. Okay, it's a, it's a, it's a busy life. It's a very busy life, Jay. Well, listen, what kind of things do you call, you know, when you're doing your calling? Whatever they want to call, sir. I, I'll go and do whatever they want. But listen, that our fella that was on there, if he is a caller, let him get some of them our callers. And if the woman still wants me to go down, I'll go down for a night's crack with them, surely. Okay, then. So, in other words, what you're saying is that you prepare to go down for a night's crack, and but if she wants you, she can have you. But if she wants the other one, you don't mind. That's right. Okay. But I think she'll take me once she sees me. That's what I think, too. I told her. <laughs> I told you you were good. I told you you were handsome. <laughs> uh, you, you're, you're always reminding me, and I keep saying this, and I shouldn't say this really because it embarrasses you. I yep. always say that you always reminded me of a young John F. Kennedy. That's right. Yes. That is right too. You've got that, those clean cut features, and I hope that's you right. haven't got any of his habits. But uh, you, you're, you're a good looking man. Thanks, right. Jay. And that's why what I keep, what, what I keep... acting are you looking at me to do for you, Jay? You're saying all these nice things. Well, I need, uh, I, I need a ton of silage. <laughs> <laughs> I'll deliver it tonight. Right, okay, just leave it in the backyard. Tell, tell me this, Jerry. I saw you put your photo in the paper there one day and you were standing in your lovely house. No, stop it. And, and there was a lovely clock behind the yes. stand right behind. I think Police Six was looking about that clock about four years ago. Don't worry about that. Let me tell you about that <laughs> clock. That's that's not a clock, it's, just, it's a cardboard front. Is that what it was? As many things in my home are. Uh, I think so, and, uh, not the my, chance. Not my a house chance. is like a Western movie set. There's nothing behind anything. <laughs> it was taken away at night. <laughs> Kenny, how's God treating you? I know you and him he, are very close. He's doing very good at the minute, Jerry. Thank is God it? my back and all is doing fairly well. But sore at night now. I'm working here for Stephen McAllister cutting silage to the bush. He told me it would only take a day and I'm here five days already and I'm still no notion of going home. <laughs> <laughs> and your your back is is, is improving gradually. Well, that is indeed, Jerry. Thank God. Uh, excellent. Okay. Yeah. How are you all keeping yourselves? We are all fine. Kelly, Please. nice to hear from you. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll, we'll pass your number on to that lady, and maybe she'll give you a wee ring. Uh, she can tell I... her not to ring me to t- at least ten o'clock at night. Okay. Maybe... Okay, my friend. Okay. Before you Hello, go. Hello, Yes. Hello, <laughs> Yes. Go on. I, you knew what I was going to ask you. Come on, give uh, us a bit of that. Hello, dear lady. Hello, dear lady. Hello. God bless to all my friends out there. Thanks, Jay and John. God bless, Kenny. Take care. Bye. He's, all right. he's still the he best. He is the best. Would you talk to your dog psychologist? He's the best. He is the best. He's sitting on a tractor oh, yeah. drawing silage yodeling. And there's talent. There's people making a thousand pound a week, and you, we don't mention any names. No, that's and, right. and they can do, they can't do a tenth of that. <laughs> right. And, and they're sitting surrounded by luxury. And there's Kenny sitting drawing silage, and yodeling like a man possessed. The lady's if the dog. The woman doesn't want him. There's something wrong with her. Tell her to ring him immediately after ten o'clock at night. Right. And he'll go down. He'll call and he'll yodel. He'll do anything. He'd play the accordion. And he'd play the accordion. And sing. And what sing. more could you want? And looks like John F. Kennedy when he's twenty-one. Do you remember the dog that licked itself to? Death or death. whatever it was doing I yesterday, know. and you said you had to get help. Well, the the girl now with the dog psychologist. She's our dog psychologist. Yes. Yes. Jeannie. Yes. Is Jeannie. Jeannie. Where is she? Uh, two. Two. Jeannie. Hello, Jeannie. Hello, Mr. Anderson. Good morning, Jeannie. You and I talked before, and yeah. uh, we talked about the uh, the idea that uh, many of the listeners in uh, Radio Ulster have been poorly served yeah. by not being uh, in uh, have a- not, by not having access to the correct information as regards their dog psychology. Yes. Uh, and I thought perhaps something should be done because I don't trust Geordie. because I think sometimes he's talking to the top of his head. Oh, it's quite good. Now, we had a couple of dogs went to the vet with uh, with Jay's fluid on them <laughs> and were very uncomfortable. Do you remember the vet? Oh, Mr. Coy, remember the vet said to us? Yes. He was very upset. Did he, he said, get told off? We mm-hmm. did. We were told off very badly. Mm-hmm. So, see, she, well, Jordy means well, but sometimes I don't think he's in fully a possession of the facts. <laughs> so, I think every once in a while when we get something serious, I think we should come to you. You don't, there's not a lot of money in it, Ginny, but, you know. Oh, that's okay. It's all for the dog's sake, sure. Indeed. Well, it's I was talking matters. to a lady. You're, you're, you're a lady who spent your life uh, studying and looking after dogs. And, indeed, you're, indeed, uh, may I ask, call you a dog psychologist? 
You may. Even the doggy woman will do. The doggy woman. Doggy woman. Okay, mm-hmm. you know what you're talking about. Ah, well, I let on, anyway, Jerry. Okay, no, no, no. I, <laughs> don't be don't be molest. Uh, this lady rang me yesterday, and she said that she has a dog. Now, I don't know if it's a male or a bitch, I think is what you refer to them as. I don't normally. But she's a dog, and apparently it's what's called a binge licker. What it does is about every month or so, it goes into this kind of binge of licking everything. It licks the ground, it licks walls, it licks ceilings, it licks chairs. And then it becomes, it licks so much that it becomes violently ill. And then it's violently ill and then it's finished. Then it doesn't do that for another month or so and then it starts licking again. It's like, a, it's like me and the drink. Oh, aye. That's you know, and so what, what do you think is wrong there? Right, well, listening to you, it sounds like a compulsive behaviour. Yes. Um, what well, do you know what breed the dog is? I can't remember now. I, I think we should have had more information, but I'm just bringing you off the top of my head here. Right. Well, compulsive behaviour, different breeds have different compulsive behaviours, like the Bull Terrier would chase its tail, and the German Shepherd would chase its tail, and the wee Border Collie would chase cars and chase bikes and chase anything it moves. So uh, con- all depends on the breed. Yes. Right? No, um, it's, the wee dog could be attention seeking. If the wee dog starts this behaviour and the lady goes and tries to stop it and whatever, you know, tries to interfere, well, the wee dog could look at, at that as attention seeking. I'm getting this lady's attention, whoever's about attention yes. at the time I want. Yes. No, it could be a boredom problem. Yes. That the wee dog could be bored. More wee stimulation in the wee dog's life would do it a favour. Yes. Um, now, what we usually suggest when we get a problem like that is, has it been to the vet? It could be a medical problem yes. before they go through deals. It could be a dietary problem. Mm-hmm. could need fibre in the diet, you know. Yes. Um, we have heard of a dog that come to us that licked the carpet and, uh, because it was getting fibre from the carpet into the diet because the diet of the dinner wasn't providing that. A fibre junkie. A fibre junkie, All yes. Right, okay. Now, what we could do... She could teach the dog another behavior. If you, if you read your dog, your dog always tells you what it's going to do before it goes to do it. You watch your dog, you know the signs. She could teach the, the dog another behavior. Right? It could be maybe something as a scent in the house that the dog has got addicted to. could mm-hmm. be the shaking back or whatever. It could be get addicted to a certain taste. Mm-hmm. And the best way, if it's a certain spot it's doing, the best way to get rid of that smell or taste is with 25% white vinegar and 75% water. That takes any aromas or anything at all out of the, the area. Right. right? No, that wouldn't harm the dog when it licks it. It would not, no way. Okay, wouldn't. right. Right. Another thing, is a great, there's a great toy out there it's called a Kong. It comes from the zoo that saved the animals from getting bored in the zoo. Mm-hmm. They always give it. It's a beehive-shaped toy. Mm-hmm. And it's made of rubber that lasts a lifetime. It doesn't get destroyed. And what we do, we can fill it with peanut butter or cheese or ham or whatever. Now, mm-hmm. each month when she knows this wee dog is going to start, maybe, oh, here she goes, I see the sign, she's going to start this, introduce the Kong then and only give the dog the Kong at that certain time. Mm-hmm. So the wee dog will say, well, this is more tastier than that walls or carpet or furniture or whatever. And it sucks away at the Kong and each time it gets out bits of food. But there's always a bit of food left, so the dog will always go back to the Kong. There's even a wee booklet out on how to fill a Kong, believe it or not. How do you spell Is that Kong as in King Kong? Yeah, K-O-N-G. I'll That's tell you what, I would kind of need a bit of a Kong myself. Right. <laughs> so that works. Do you think that works? The Kong is an amazing toy for any behaviour that you do not want the dog to do. What we've got to do really is distract the dog from that behaviour onto a positive behaviour. Mm-hmm. So the Kong is a great, great, and it lasts a lifetime. Then once the wee dog stops, she rinses out the Kong with good warm water and keeps it nice and clean and fresh. And each month, as you say, the wee dog starts to introduce the Kong and only introduce it then. Each t- between that, we take the Kong away. Never leave the Kong lying with the dog. It always it's to distract the attention. Right. Now, we could, if she'd like to ring us at Rascals yes. on 02871 yes. 354 mm. there's a homeopathic medicine she could get. Now, if she rings us 
and we can go into the, the problem in more detail, we could get our homeopathic medicine, which will help to stop that as well. No, this is very helpful, Jenny. Thank. I feel as if I'm pilfering you because uh, listeners may not realise that you've got a regular slot on the Mark Patterson show mm-hmm. on Radio Foil on Fridays after 4 o'clock. That's so right. maybe I hope you don't mind, I hope he doesn't mind, if we, if we come to you every once in a while about something that we feel as if we need an expert advice on. Not a problem. Okay, well, thank you very much, Jenny. Thank you, Jay. God bless you. You too. And send me a Kong. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. bye. <laughs> Now there's a girl who knows what she's um, talking about. Can you send on the CD anyway, sure? Uh, see, uh, we have enough CDs, tell him. records of the 60s that's good that that's uh, thunderclap new man that's a song called something in the air uh there's a lady on the line here hello good morning hello. yes hello jerry hello who's that that's fiorenza mcgartland from oma fiorenza fiorenza yeah yeah what a lovely name <laughs> is that uh, that's foreign it, isn't it no it's italian italian are, yes. you, are you italian yourself yes i'm italian oh good what's your second name the, well magartland magartland name are the name but i was cardarelli <laughs> ah great 
<laughs> Great. <laughs> Dar, uh, were you from a, an Oma Italian family? No, no, no. I, uh, what do you call a relation? Well, not relation. Friend, did if you remember, <laughs> you don't know if you remember the Anna Ellen Strand Road. Of course I do. Um, well, I remember, I, I remember Gino in particular. Ah, the late, oh, the do you remember Gino? There, you know, Gino's gone now. Gino's gone, the corner's gone, uh, and Donita's yes. gone. Uh, yes. Was he there? Yes, left the idea. Is in uh, doing the Bassiano or town there in Italy. Uh, yes. She's a uh, kind of paralyzed and Fadina. Yes. And now from Mr. Science, uh, she was called Bella, Isabella. She, she's open, oh, the drum road, drum and us on the there and there anyway. Yes, I go to see her sometime. And Sonny, Sonny Fiorentini is still Fiorentini, up here. well, that's them. We come from the same village. That's to see what you call the Fiorentina there, uh, uh, Vetto, and uh, yeah, the other boy from Vella there, like, you know, Rolla, and after the, the um, what do you call, Battisti up in the street. Batisti, yes. Macari, well, it, Battisti, and uh, Cassoni. Cassoni, Cassoni. They, they all Fiorentini. come from my town. That's, yeah. the, That's just uh, outside of Rome, wasn't it? Uh, yes, it's so a can't maybe take maybe it's like from uh, Oma to Derry, can they know? That's where we are, we village. But, uh, you know, I come over the dairy first, uh, and um, I don't know the any time they listen to me. The, um, you know the time the queen uh, come over the open, uh, uh, well, this uh, maybe is uh, 47 or 48 years ago. The Queen of Prince Philippe come to open uh, uh, the Alta Galvana Hospital. Thing. Yes, I do remember. I, right. I remember it because I remember Prince Philip. He, he was the Duke of Edinburgh. He yeah. wore his, he wore his uh, sailor suit. Well, you know what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I was in a, when I come over to the dairy uh, the time, uh, I stopped in London because Mrs. Science, Bella, and really, she was married. She was in the time of the husband got married there in a party. Yes. And they, they, he was working in London. So I come on up to the London, I stayed there one night. Next day we went in the station, Houston, I think. Was anyway to get the train to go up to the dairy. Yes. So we chatting, and I can't speak one word. <laughs> and uh, what do you call, and this lady standing there in the same uh, compartment, and m maybe them told us explain about uh, this girl, she no speaking, you know, I was a young girl at the time. Yeah. And uh, don't speak, uh, maybe like, you know, the help, she's good there. She was good at Belfast. Yes. And uh, next time I uh, chat, chat is your name, your your seat, your thing for sleep, everything. Bye bye, bye bye. Come down the stairs, come down the train. Waving with my ticket. Bye bye. The train is away. And I was left in the train with no ticket. No ticket. No lingo. And that is with dictionary and I just start crying. I said, take it, take it. The next time she pressed and the bottom of this. Uh, a uh, man come over, the, the, whatever they call it, this inspector, and the, the, this lady must explain everything. Oh, and after, in the meantime, a bell and her husband went in the office to tell her, look, it's a lady there, uh, the good there, she's no speak, she has no ticket. She has no money, she's, no ticket, no nothing. No, other than no lingo. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> no language, no lingo, no, no money, no and ticket. And after what, every, every station I can do, and there I would get in the boat, uh, uh, if you're going to get that early, blah, 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 all shot in my name there. When you reach a dairy, all flag, and they don't have Belfast from Belfast to the home. And I say, what the heck is? When I reach my face, it's like uh, the man come uh, from the coal, uh, because at the time, you know, the train, the steamer there. Yes, yes. In my face, I was born. And I said, Gino, Gino coming up and met me. I said, what's the rule of this flag? Well, she said, they put the flag for you coming from Rome, uh, the real flag here. You, know? <laughs> you can't have a woman coming from Rome and no and flag, huh? I said, when I found out, I said, what the heck, the queen of give me a lift, and then London instead of going through all of this, coming up uh, in the boat of a tour. <laughs> yeah, well, you were, you were treated like a queen. Oh, this. So, anyway, from there and after I went to the Oma. Yes. And uh, there's a Batista there. I, and uh, in Oma... Was a uh, anyway I met I see this because in the cafe there's this crow that come every week there and this lovely boy, ginger hair, handsome boy, mm. and I say oh God and this is Saint Anthony I love him but I couldn't tell no then you know oh you, fancy, you, you fancy, fancied you fancied him that time uh, that time you can't tell the man you fancy him. but anyway you must have found me whatever happened so you send for a date yes. and I. When the Miss Batista said that ginger hair boy went for a date, I never hear what's that, the fish and potatoes on them. I used to, but she said, You want to go out with you? 
Oh, God, is that the way I said a date? date? <laughs> ah, you see, you would fancy the ginger haired boys, because yeah, there's not too many of them knocking about I Rome. I fancy and I still with them, Jerry. So uh -huh. we married that for 18 months of Courton, and I learned the lingo we but at the time. Yeah. Now we have five uh, uh, grown up children, and I have 12 grandchildren. Is he still alive? Is your husband still alive? Oh, yes, he's still alive. He just come back from my side phone when he was not here. See, as in case he's has, jealous. Has he still he's got his... Hey, has he still got his ginger hair? Is he oh, bald? Well, it's white hair like me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, anyway, I bet you, listen, I bet you you turned a few heads when you were a young girl down oh, around Oma. Oh, most, the most pretty, I said, yeah. And I know what happened after Jerry when we were courting. See, I had only six months uh, 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 stay. Yes. I needed the police to come, you have to go home. I don't want to go home, I said, no way. I said, I needed Jerry for 12 months or 13, jumping from home to Movella, from Movella to Bunkrana, from Bunkrana to Bray, from Bray to Dobble and back at the Bundona home. I was just like a wreck at the free day every police to come near me. <laughs> you, were on the, you were on the run? Yeah, on the run, Jerry, because they, they wanted to send me back. <laughs> My permit was over and I, I have to go home. I know. Well, listen, I'm glad, I'm glad you've wronged um, the talk. You, you'll have to talk to us again. Uh, give us a ring again sometime. Yes. I, there's lots of things I want to ask yes, you, but I yes, want to Rob, think about yes. it. Yes, come here, but I want the request for tomorrow. Okay, go I'm ahead. A, I am in a blind center now, no, ma. Yes. And this wee lady, she's 88. Yes. See, I'm, a, I'm a partial blind, like, you know. Yes. And after that, heart attack, I go into, anyway, I'm a, a wretch, whatever you can call it. But Tony still love me, anyway. Yes. And uh, so I fall in love with you, because you go, you go, don't get last year, we're in a race, you know, a race in the morning, there's a walk and whatever they call it, walk and... Oh, I don't know. To, you know, the walk and, you know, my you go, don't get was there. And I got the food taken, and Annie, my girl, and I said, band every day when you and you go. Here's my Hugo, my Hugo. So I want to use the play the regular to for Annie tomorrow, because tomorrow's open day in the blind center. All right, then. And I pray for Annie, my girl, special request, it doesn't matter what it is. She'll all the way listen to you, singing the song and the dare, whatever it be. All right, and I'll uh, do that for what's Anna your, what's McGowan and a whole crowd, uh, the, the, the helper there in the blind center, all my friends I met every time I go in the blind center, right. Jerry. That's Anna McGowan. Anna McGowan, yes. It's a lovely, <laughs> lovely girl, full alive every time. Okay. Yes, my Hugo come. Here, Jerry, come. Here, Hugo, so, here, Jerry. Eh? <laughs> what? Here, Hugo, come. Here, Hugo, come. You, you go. <laughs> You go. <laughs> I have a son-in-law that call you go. And after his father, they call him a QA. And I say, between a QA, QA to Q go, you got to know where I am. <laughs> Tony laughing every time I want to speak. And I shy at the children. No, where you, you got that? No, where do you get this? Where do you got that? Tony said, God save us. I don't know how the people can understand you, but anyway... No, I cannot I, give a... Give I'm a, a I, that's it, Jerry. I'm here for... Uh, we married in the 1st of the August, uh, 45 years. Yes. Congratulations. And, uh, I'm here for yeah. 48 years, so I'm more Irish than Italian. Okay. But we were up and down in the Italy many times, you know, take my husband there, like, you know, my children, the grandchildren, but then I can't go anymore because I'm afraid I'm right. okay. with this heart, this ticky ticky here, you know. Yeah, okay. All right, Jerry, well, thank you very much, dear. Thank you very much. If you uh, ever Anna, come Anna, to Oma, hey, if you ever come to Oma, come on up and make a nice plate of lasagna. I will. So oh, right. I, oh I, I bet you it's nice, too. Yes. Come here, Jerry. Did you ever did you maybe, you know, after it, around at 2 o'clock at that time, All we right. get in this dinner because I want all the ear, the uh, honey there, you know. All she, right. Uh, <laughs> Okay, then. Thank you right, very yes. much. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you, dear. Bye. 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 I was nearly talking like that. Uh, no. That's I know. Oh, uh, she's great. Wasn't she fabulous? There's an man wants to talk to you I now. I bet you her lasagna's all right. Not I like the old stuff you get in the fridge. I know. Hello, good morning. Hello, Jerry. Yes, good morning, sir. My name's Alan Johnston. Yes, Alan. I believe yesterday you, were, uh, you had somebody inquiring about a Spitfire. Indeed, yes, he was talking about the model Spitfire that used to be, where did he say it used to be? Outside the Belfast Telegraph. Exactly, and he wanted to know where it is. Have you any idea where it is? I have no idea. Well, thank you very much. That's, <laughs> that's very helpful. But, uh, but the, um, the, the, didn't the Belfast Telegraph actually sponsor the, uh, re the renovation of another Spitfire? I actually don't about, know that. About 
six or seven years ago. I, I really think I remember it being in the splashed all over the papers or something. I really don't know that. Uh, I wonder if that's true, if that's the case. Maybe somebody would tell us more about that. Well, I believe that Spitfire that was renovated, it was actually uh, kept within the province. It went down to Skillen or somewhere like that. It's probably gone up to maybe that airport up there. Yeah. Um, I, I seem to half remember seeing one somewhere. I think there's something in the Ulster Museum where there used to be, or am I thinking of somewhere else entirely different? Uh, I don't I'm know. Not, maybe I'm not somebody, Jerry, but maybe somebody would tell me... The, uh, it was supposed to have been kept in the province. All right. And I believe it was actually called Belfast Telegraph. All right, then, OK. But the, right. uh, the, the, regarding the model, the, um, I don't think you'd go much uh, worse if you were to ask the Ulster Aviation Society... All where right. the, because they may well know where it's gone. Okay, then. I'll okay. do that, sir. Thank you very much. Right on, Okay. Bye. 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 <laughs> I know. That's right, I, I know. I, I, I. This will be our last piece of music today. Or come to think of it, we hardly played any at all. I'm beginning to think we're only starting to, we're only starting to play two or three songs each hour and a half today. Maybe... Do you want me to play more music? I will if you want me to. I am Jeremiah Dixon. I am a Jody boy. Glass of wine with you, sir, and the ladies I'm enjoying. Old Durham and Northumberland is measured up by my own hand. It was my fate from birth to make my mark upon the earth. He calls me Charlie Mason, stargazer am I It seems that I was born to chart the evening sky They cut me out for baking bread But I had other dreams instead This baker's boy from the West Country Would join the Royal Society We are sailing to Philadelphia, a world away from the cold tide. Sailing to Philadelphia to draw the line, the Mason Dixon line. But I swear you'll make me mad The West will kill us both You gullible Jody lad You talk of liberty How can America be free A Jody and a baker's boy In the forests of the Iroquois Now hold your head up, Mason, see America lies there The morning tide has raised the capes of Delaware Come up and feel the sun Philadelphia, a world away from the cold Sailing to Philadelphia. 
That's nearly all we have time for today. That's uh, Mark Knopfler from an album called Sailing to America. That's a song called Sailing to Philadelphia. I've got lots of emails and letters and poems that I haven't done today. I'm going to do all those tomorrow. I'll just read. I'll just read this one. And Bl- uh, yes, Hillary and Blossom Dairy. I'll just do this one from Dr. Hillary Kennedy from County Down. He said, perhaps the gentleman from Larne who is experiencing difficulties in getting permission from planning service in Ballymena to erect a sign for the Riverdale Shopping Centre should instead join forces with a mobile phone company and try to get permission under the prior approval procedure to erect a mast instead. I think he would experience little difficulty in getting that one passed, our illustrious planners. What he's trying to say, you can't put a sign up for a, for a, for a supermarket to tell the people where it is, but you try putting up a mast and they'll fire them up so fast that your feet won't hit the ground. I tell you something. He's telling me a lot of other stuff as well, but I better not read that or else I get into trouble. But it smacks to me as of other truth, I have to be honest with you. That's all we have time for. Tomorrow's Complaints Day. Tomorrow's Friday. Tomorrow's the day I like because it means I don't have to get up on Saturday. It's 12 o'clock. Goodbye.